Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. The Catholic Church is asking the United States Supreme Court to protect the absolute secrecy of the confessional booth. We interview Father Frank Pavone, founder of Priests for Life and one of the most influential leaders of the pro-life movement in America. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. The Roman Catholic Church in America is asking the United States Supreme Court to protect religious freedom for the absolute secrecy of the confessional booth. The case involves a Roman Catholic priest in Louisiana who heard the confession of a young girl who confessed that she had sexual relations with an adult man. But the girl later, later testified against that man in court in a child abuse claim. The Roman Catholic priest who heard her confession refused to testify in court for either party, claiming he had a legal exemption under clergy penitent privilege. Courts, by the way, have long protected the clergy's First Amendment right to hear confessions and maintain absolute secrecy, which is required by the Pope to protect the sacrament of confession as a religious ritual. In fact, if any priest ever spilled the beans and told the public what he heard in secret counseling, that priest himself could be excommunicated from the Catholic Church. And courts cannot compel the priest to testify under any circumstances. The NC Register reports, for example, here's a quote from the First Circuit Court of Appeals who agreed, ruling in this case that the record showed the girl communicated the, the sexual abuse during the Sacrament of Reconciliation and quote, the law exempted priests from being required to report communications that they have a duty to keep confidential according to the discipline or tenets of the church. So again, the First Circuit Court of Appeals and longstanding Supreme Court precedent says, priests are allowed to keep your secrets, it's safe they have 100% confidentiality. If you wanna go and confess your sins, nobody will ever find out what you said behind closed doors. The diocese had argued the girl's testimony about the confession should not be admitted as evidence because of failing to report abuse. And, but now there are new rules and various states are reporting, a, a, in fact, requiring that professionals have a duty to report to the police any illegal activity, and that's been tested in cases of doctor-patient confidentiality or uh, attorney-client privilege. Sometimes it's upheld, but sometimes they're finding there is a duty to report. And that's what happened in this Louisiana Supreme Court case. The same case gave a different ruling in a different court that the law did not prevent the girl from testifying about her own confession. If the penitent waives the privilege, then the priest cannot raise that privilege to protect himself. He can only claim the privilege on behalf of the person, not in his own right. This according to the Louisiana High Court, but the High Court said the trial court needed to determine, they send it back down to the lower court, whether the communications between the child and the priest were confessions per se, and whether the priest obtained knowledge about the outside of the confessional that would also trigger his so-called duty to report. Well, is there an absolute privilege? We'll find out in, in months ahead, but uh, the Bible says this in James chapter five, we are encouraged to confess your sins one to another and pray for another that you may be healed. Let's take a moment and pray. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we do pray for religious freedom to be protected so that every clergyman is not obligated to rat out those who confess their sins. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. We'll take a short break and when we go back, Father Frank Pavone will explain more. Discerning the spirits that rule our politicians, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Are you pro-life? 
Do you believe that abortion kills innocent children? If so, I want you to take action today and sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org. Here's three petitions we need you to sign. The number one is to stop Planned Parenthood from getting your taxpayer dollars. Did you know they've received now $487 million in your taxpayer dollars? I don't think that's right. They use that money to facilitate 329,445 abortions, not really to pay for adoption or mammograms, but just to kill innocent children. Sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. Here's number two petition we want you to sign, and that's to defund Obamacare. This bad healthcare law is now forcing Christian employers to pay for contraception, sterilization, and abortion pills free of charge for all their employees, or the Christian employer has to pay a $100 fine per day per employee. That's gonna bankrupt our friends like the Hobby Lobby Corporation, Christian business owners, and even Catholic hospitals now are being forced to pay for abortions. The Obama administration is now promoting the Plan B abortion pill over the counter for children as young as seven years old. Here's petition number three we need you to sign at PrayInJesusName.org to help pass Senate Bill 583, the Life Begins at Conception Act. This personhood bill, introduced by my friend, Senator Rand Paul, can actually defend life and help overturn Roe versus Wade. Take action today. I know you care about the unborn, but please sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. We will fax that petition free of charge to your congressman. Sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org. Take action today if you're pro-life. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Thank you again for watching PIJN News. I'm joined now by my dear friend who I've known for several years, Father Frank Pavone of Priests for Life, joining us from New York City via Skype. Welcome, Father Pavone. Hi, Dr. Chaps, it's so good to be with you, and uh, thanks so much for having me today. Well, thank you. You are a diocesan priest, which to us non-Catholics means what? Who do you work for? Uh, it means I'm under a, a, under a particular uh, bishop. I was ordained actually by Cardinal John O'Connor, whom some of our viewers might know of. He was also a military man, and, and he uh, was a great, great advocate for uh, biblical truth, uh, for the right to life, and he ordained me in 1988, to serve uh, in the Archdiocese of New York. So a diocese is basically a geographical area uh, that a priest is attached to. And you have a special mission. Now, even though you work for uh, Cardinal Timothy Dolan, you are, you are really, you have a nationwide ministry, Priests for Life, and you have a special dispensation to travel around America and promote pro-life causes. How did you get that? Uh, it was a call of conscience, really. You know, Cardinal O'Connor was uh, actually one of the ones that nurtured this uh, within me. But it was really uh, after I had been ordained and started serving in a, in a parish here in New York, I really experienced a call to devote myself full time to protecting our unborn brothers and sisters. And many others have felt that same call, both as priests and also as, as laypersons uh, and also pastors of other denominations. And so I went to the Cardinal and I said, look, this is, this is welling up within me. I want to devote all my time to ending abortion. And, uh, and, and that was in 1993, and he said yes, and I've been doing it ever since. Well, fantastic. Priestsforlife.org is your website. And we're gonna talk about pro-life issues in the next segment. But first, I wanna get your comment on this recent court decision out of the Louisiana Supreme Court. You know, the, the seal of confession and the sacrament of penance has been a Roman Catholic tradition for many years, uh, you know, and for a priest to hear somebody's private confession of their sin in the confessional booth is a very sacred ritual, and you, you just can't talk about that in public, but now the Louisiana Supreme Court is saying what? Well, a decision came down that, that said that this is a particular case they've been dealing with uh, that uh, has to do with, uh, with a, a, an abuse situation, and they're asking a priest to reveal uh, what he heard in confession so that uh, this case can be, can be dealt with. 
And we're objecting strongly to that because there has got to be, I mean, of course, we all know about professional confidentiality, uh, whether it's doctor patient privilege or, or attorney client. There's always, there's always that protection when somebody is trying to help another individual on a professional level that involves sharing intimate details that are very personal and private by, by nature. Um, but in the case of the confessional, it's even more of an obligation. It's absolute and total secrecy. I, as a priest, when I hear, let me give you, let me give you a stark example. If one of my employees came to me in confession, and they confessed, the Father, I stole twenty-five dollars from uh, your desk drawer. It was open, and I went in and I took the money. Okay, so are you sorry? Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, restitution has to be, of course, uh, practiced. And then the priest uh, 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 says, you know, to them, the Lord absolves you of your sins. But if I heard that confession, I could not then, after that confession, go and lock my desk drawer. Because then I'm acting on knowledge that I received specifically in that sacred moment when that person was really confessing to God their sin. So it's so it's such a strong obligation. Not only can I not say anything publicly, I cannot say anything privately, and I cannot even act on the knowledge that I've received. That's how how much the Catholic uh, uh, Church puts uh, uh, on this on this so-called seal of confession. Why is this the case, and why do we have to even defend it in court uh, in a case like this? The reason is very simple. There must be a place in our society where people can talk to another human being for the purposes of their religious faith. They're talking to God in those cases, but it's a conversation shared with another human being. But really, they're talking to God, because why would a person come to me to confess their sins? I mean, in the Catholic faith, we have these sacraments, but it is not I as a person who am any better than the person confessing to me. I have to confess my sins, too. We're all sinners. We know that, and it's only in the blood of Jesus Christ, it's only in that sacred relationship with Jesus Christ that we can ever hope to find forgiveness. But that's what that moment is all about. The person is actually coming to God, and if, they don't, if there's no place in any human conversation where a person has the absolute guarantee that that conversation is going to stay between those two people, well, then people would lose a certain amount of trust. Uh, in their spiritual advisors, in their spiritual counselors, in their priests. And there would be certain things then that they would not say at all. And that, But then we wouldn't be able to help them. And so that's what's uh, uh, at stake here in this particular and case. And so this is also kind of a safety valve in society for people who are struggling with, you know, the suggestion that they should go out and sin. And when people, you know, are tempted to go out and hurt their neighbor, it's good to have a safe conversation in private with a priest so that you end up repenting and you don't go hurt your neighbor. And, and if the exactly. courts then uh, try to infringe on that secrecy and they violate what we call the clergy penitent privilege in a, in a court of law, then the people no longer feel the safety to get private counseling and they don't get the help they need. And it, it ends up increasing the amount of crime that's out there in society. Well, that's right, because they're going to get, you know, just because it's private uh, uh, doesn't mean the priest isn't going to be tough with them. The priest is going to be very tough with them and try to try to get them into into line uh, with proper repentance, restitution and doing the things that they need to do to avoid uh, those kind of sins in the future. Now, we can certainly appreciate the uh, desire of those in public authority to get information to to protect uh, people against abuse or to protect uh, this, the, anybody from any kind of, of, uh, of violent act. Uh, but the point remains uh, exactly what you're saying, that, 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 that it, this is for the public good, that we have to have that sacred space of, of complete privacy. Uh, and then there's another issue here too, of course, which is uh, one that you and I have both been, uh, been very uh, uh, strongly involved in, simply religious freedom. If the Catholic Church or any church believes that this is how their sacramental system needs to be or that this is what the Lord requires of them, well, then that has to be respected by the state. Uh, it, 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 is a, it is a right that we have as human beings and as Americans under the Constitution to say, look, the, the, the churches, the congregations, the pastors need to be able to 
uh, profess the faith exactly the way it is, and those the people participating in the church need to be able to live that faith exactly as the church teaches it, without any state interference whatsoever, no matter how good the state thinks its motives are uh, for interfering. Uh, they, 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 they cannot do so, especially when it is a, a deeply held tenet of that particular faith. Absolutely. We're going to take a short break, but I want to encourage people, whether you're Protestant or Catholic, we believe the Bible says in James chapter five, confess your sins to one another and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The effective prayer of a righteous man can accomplish much. We're going to take a short break and we'll be back with Father Frank Pavone, leader of Priests for Life making your voice heard in our nation's capital. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Are you pro-life? Do you believe that abortion kills innocent children? If so, I want you to take action today and sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org. Here's three petitions we need you to sign. The number one is to stop Planned Parenthood from getting your taxpayer dollars. Did you know they've received now $487 million in your taxpayer dollars? I don't think that's right. They use that money to facilitate 329,445 abortions, not really to pay for adoption or mammograms, but just to kill innocent children. Sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. Here's number two petition we want you to sign, and that's to defund Obamacare. This bad healthcare law is now force, forcing Christian employers to pay for contraception, sterilization, and abortion pills free of charge for all their employees, or the Christian employer has to pay a $100 fine per day per employee. That's gonna bankrupt our friends like the Hobby Lobby Corporation, Christian business owners, and even Catholic hospitals now are being forced to pay for abortions. The Obama administration is now promoting the Plan B abortion pill over the counter for children as young as seven years old. Here's petition number three we need you to sign at PrayInJesusName.org to help pass Senate Bill 583, the Life Begins at Conception Act. This personhood bill, introduced by my friend, Senator Rand Paul, can actually defend life and help overturn Roe versus Wade. Take action today. I know you care about the unborn, but please sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. We will fax that petition free of charge to your congressman. Sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org. Take action today if you're pro-life. Welcome back and thank you for watching PIJN News. I'm joined again by my dear friend, Father Frank Pavone from New York City via Skype. Welcome back, Father Frank. Great to be with you, Dr. Chaps. Thanks for having me. So if you could talk about your organization, Priests for Life, uh, doesn't every priest in the Catholic Church have a pro-life position and what makes you guys different? Well, when people ask me, isn't every priest for life, I say yes, but we just help them to say so. You know, people very much wanna see their, their pastors at the forefront of battles like we have over abortion. And yet they often hear silence from the pulpit and they wonder why. And so many of the clergy uh, are quiet about this uh, because they lack confidence in addressing these issues. We try to make up for that. We try to help them to overcome their fears. We try to equip them with the, the, the knowledge that they need and the confidence they, they ought to have. Uh, and, and we also connect them with one another, again, across denominational lines, uh, to say, listen, we're all in this battle together. We have the power of the Word of God, and we can overcome evils like abortion. Uh, but we can't be silent about it. Uh, to be silent about the killing uh, of God's children on this massive scale uh, would be to be silent about the gospel. And of course, that's not an option. And I heard you say you have about 10,000 priests who have signed up. Is it only for priests or can other citizens help you? Well, we have actually other citizens helping as well. A priest for life uh, is, is really for everybody in the church who wants to do something to bring an end to abortion. Uh, so it started out as, as the idea of priests helping priests. And, uh, you know, Bernard Nathanson, who started the abortion industry uh, in the United States, said that it was the silence of the clergy 
that enabled him and his colleagues to get away with what they did. So from him, we took that inspiration. Let's equip the clergy. But then, of course, it goes far beyond that. We have seminars for uh, for laity. We have trainings on how to talk about abortion, how to be active in, in bringing it to an end. Uh, and it's a very, very now a very wide reaching and diverse ministry that we have uh, at Priests for Life. Well, it seems like there has to be sort of a political mission to that. I met you in Washington, D.C. You have an office there. Uh, can you talk about church and state or religion and politics? Should those things be mixed? They're, they're very much mixed, uh, of course, from the very beginning of our of our nation. It was from the, the thundering of the pulpits of America that freedom was proclaimed and freedom was nurtured uh, because the gospel, of course, is is freedom uh, in Jesus Christ. So, so uh, the, the, what we say at Priests for Life uh, dealing with the abortion issue is that the people of God have to elect public servants who know the difference between serving the public and killing the public. Now, if they don't know that difference, they don't belong in public office. And we're convinced that the pastors need to be saying that from the pulpit. Uh, We encourage, therefore, uh, churches to be involved in getting their people registered to vote, in getting them to the polls on Election Day, and in informing them not only about the issues that matter when they go to the polls, but also about where the candidates stand on those issues. As you well know, there's a big difference between endorsing a candidate, which the churches should not necessarily do, but on the other hand, informing their people about where the candidates stand. That latter activity is completely legal and certainly is part of our task of equipping the people of God to go out and make a difference. So these are some of the things we train the clergy how to do. So you talked about uh, the idea of killing the public. In fact, the the Democrat platform of their entire party is the pro-choice plank of their platform. Really, they're asking politicians to authorize killing children or killing some of the public. Does that conflict with their mission of being a public servant? You know what it does? It undermines the very purpose of government. Uh, Our Declaration of Independence tells us that we have rights given to us by God, starting with life, and that governments exist to protect those rights. And so how and how can a party or a candidate say uh, that, that they're, they're okay with the destruction of, of those rights? And if you destroy a child's right to life, you've taken away also all their other rights, their right to education and health care and protection, national security. Every issue that's an issue at all uh, it, it rests on the foundation of the right to life. So we don't see how it's possible. Uh, to, uh, to, to, to credibly present yourself for public office when taking a, a, a pro-choice position when the choice is the killing of children. So besides your mission to educate the public and maybe uh, hold some politicians accountable, you also have a great ministry of compassion towards women, whether they are uh, pregnant women or even post-abortive women. Talk about Rachel's Vineyard. Yes, we operate Rachel's Vineyard, which is the largest ministry in the world for healing after abortion. We who oppose abortion do not oppose those who have had abortions, but rather we embrace them with the compassion, the mercy, the forgiveness of Christ. And the Rachel's Vineyard experience is a weekend retreat where where moms and dads also of aborted children, and sometimes even some of the other relatives, will come and in, a, in a supportive environment in which there is always a member of the clergy and there's always a licensed professional counselor. They will explore their need for healing. They'll share their stories with others who've been through the same uh, circumstances, and, they'll, and they'll, they'll delve into the Word of God. It's based on scripture, and it is an opportunity for them to see more clearly how they need to heal, to grieve their children, and to start on that path of of healing. Of course, it's a lifelong journey, but these weekends can provide the insight and the encouragement they need to take that journey and to persevere on that journey uh, as as they realize that God is indeed, in Christ, ready to forgive and heal them. You have a pamphlet that I found on Amazon Pro-Life Today and Always. Uh, how can people get your materials or, or join or participate in those retreats? Well, if people want to get our materials, we have a, a wide range of, of Pro-Life products at prolifeproducts.org. 
Uh, then priestsforlife.org is our main website, and people will find links to all our different uh, works like Political Responsibility and like Rachel's Vineyard. They'll be all across the top there, priestsforlife.org. Thank you. Our guest has been Father Frank Pavone. We'll take a short break, and we'll be right back. This is PIJN News. Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Once your voice heard by multiple congressmen at FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. Can I take a moment to ask you to donate today? There are such important battles that we're fighting and winning around the country to defend religious liberty. How much is the right to pray in Jesus' name worth to you? Well, to me, it was worth a 16-year career and a million-dollar pension, which I sacrificed to defend Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to call us today, toll-free at 866-Obey-God, and make a donation. How much would you pay to defend religious liberty? Would you give $10 or $20 or $100? I bet there's some people who are watching who can even give $1,000 today just to help us stay on the air, to broadcast this into people's homes, to organize these petition drives, and especially, we spend thousands of dollars organizing rallies around the country and petitioning legislators. Please call us today at 866-Obey-God and give the best pledge that you can give to defend religious liberty and take a stand for Jesus Christ. We can't do it without you. Please donate today. Our thanks again to Father Frank for that amazing interview. We're gonna have him back in the future to talk about pro-life issues. Please donate if you can. Help us stay on the air at PrayInJesusName.org. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. On tomorrow's show, Phyllis Schlafly. You don't wanna miss that, we'll see you then. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.